this time of year, everyone always talks about certain trainers, Bob Baffert, Todd Pletcher. But there's also one trainer that always comes into my mind. I'm like, he's always got one that's right there. Maybe this is the year where his horse steps up to the next level. Kelly Breen? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Kelly Breen, one of our favorites, and he's a trainer who's always got some three-year-olds just ready to kind of step up and shock you. And he's got quite a few of them here this year coming up for big races in Louisiana and in New Mexico. Kelly Breen is with us here. Kelly, are you there? I'm here. Hey, brother, how you doing? It's Ken Rudolph and Todd Trupp. What's going on, man? How you doing? We are well today. Thank you so much. One of your horses is on my Derby top five list. I'll share that with you in a few moments. But <laughs> <Okay>. first, <laughs> that's good news for you, by the way, because I have the magic touch. Um, but first, let's talk about the big challenge for a couple of your horses, Pants on Fire and Nacho Business, coming up in the Louisiana Derby. How do you feel about both horses coming into this big challenge as you're running out of time to get stakes earnings for the Derby? Well, the horses are training well, and, you know, it's time for them to put up or shut up. So it's, you know, crunch time for the Derby. Uh, not that we're themed on having a horse in the Kentucky Derby, but it's awfully nice. And a million dollars, you know, one million dollars. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, you bring Nacho Business, the top half of the entry in the Louisiana Derby, uh, over from Gulfstream Park. You had to be encouraged with what you saw with Mucho Macho Man coming in there and pretty much dominating the Risen Star. Would you say the best three-year-olds in America this year are down in Florida at Gulfstream Park? Uh, you know, the, the way that we're shaping up, and I'm training out at Palm Meadows and seeing a bunch of the horses just there themselves, horses like Uncle Mo and Stay Thirsty and, and the horse that uh, Arch Traveler who beats Nacho Business. Um, you know, if I had my top choice and if we didn't sell Sweet Ducky just in the last week, uh, we would take on the top with our top and go for the uh, for the Florida Derby. And I think that that's one of the toughest races that's coming up so far for the Derby press. I, I, this is a, kind of an out there question, but I have to ask it. <laughs> With George and Lori Hall, why all the Nacho references in the name? <laughs> Thank you. Because Na Nacho Saints going to be showing up, obviously, in the Sunland Dor Derby. Why do they uh, have such deference to Nacho? I've always wondered that too. You know, it's uh, it sounds kind of corny a little bit that they have these Nacho horses, but we only have Nacho three Nacho names, three uh, oh, really? horses. But <laughs> it, it, it just happens to be that they turned out to be pretty good ones. So, <laughs> you know, we have Nacho Business, Nacho Saint, and last year we had Nacho Friend. Exactly. So it, it's not like a big contingency of Nachos. It just happened to be three, and they knock on wood that they're running well. Yeah, so maybe you, you stay with that name uh, if you anticipate that you want to have a good horse. We're looking at Nacho Business's most recent start uh, down at Gulfstream Park, and from the one-turn mile, you sent him a mile and an eighth, and for the most part, he seemed to handle that two turns in the distance rather well. Yeah, if you could actually, I'm in my car outside the barn at, at uh, Fairgrounds. If you could see the race where I think we really lost the race was going into the three-quarter pole. And I know you don't usually say that you lose a race that early into the race. But if you watch Joe and he really has to reach up and grab him and trying to get him to settle down when they're going to middle quarter in like you know 25 or something like that. And it really took a little bit of the run out of the horse. Um you know, I think he put in a great performance. The uh, only thing is, is that he got beat. Yeah, on that day, they went 49 for the half, 26 for that middle quarter you were talking about. So that didn't really give him much to run at. And he takes him back, and he has to make that move turning for home. So I can see what you're talking about with Nacho Business. Now he's going to get that mile and an eighth and should have a little bit more to run at coming up in the uh, Louisiana Derby. And that's what Pants on Fire is there to do. He's kind of a one-run horse. He wants to go. It, that's exactly when we were first talking about the races with the halls to say pants on fire would set it up just right for him. And since then, when we were last talking about it, uh, pants on fire has really developed. Uh, he came out of his last race. He had a lung infection. Uh, it's taken a little while for it to clear up. Um, shipping, you know, we put him on the van. We kept him on antibiotics throughout the way over here so he doesn't get sick. And I, I really like the way that he's been training as of re recently. So I'm hoping that uh, he's not just a rabbit to say that he's got a legitimate chance and maybe he had that little bit of bug going through his system when he ran last time. And I'm hoping big things from both horses. 
You have two horses as well the following day at Sunland Park in the Sunland Derby. Ruler on Ice and Nacho Saint. Looking at the morning line, the morning lining giving more of a chance to Nacho Saint at 7 2. But Ruler on Ice, you have to be impressed with how he's handled everything you've asked him. I mean, first of all, his four career starts Monmouth, Delaware, Aqueduct, and Parks. Uh, why the decision now to go to New Mexico with him? Well, we kind of ran out of some races of what to go with. I don't think he's up to the caliber to chase on a horse like Uncle Mo in the woods. And there was a smaller race at Laurel Park uh, last Saturday, and it was a $50,000 race. And if we're going to fly one horse out, and it costs pretty much a similar price for you know, a two-for-one deal when you have to buy a pallet for Federal Express, <laughs> that yeah. uh, if he was to win and get, earn $30,000, you know, why not take a chance and say, hey, you know, give him a one-two punch there also for 800000 And here's a horse that's definitely coming in in good form, the son of Roman Ruler. We're looking at the performance in October of last year when he was able to break the maiden on the off track and then continues to improve. And now third off the layoff, biggest challenge of the career for Ruler on Ice is coming up this weekend. All right, Kelly, I'm about to make your year, brother. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. I have five horses that I'm thinking about for the Kentucky Derby. Of those five, You've got one of those horses in my top five, and it's Nacho Saint, and it's all based on what I saw in the Gotham. I know you're probably still upset about the luck that you had in that race, or lack thereof, and the trip mm -hmm. that you got, but I'm thinking if you take away the break, you take away the problems in the final turn, your horse is right there in the mix. I think he's going to be perfect at Sunland Park, and I'm assuming you have to be confident as well. Um, you know, he's a, a real a horse that just always tries. You know, yeah. and to say we had one of the best maidens last year that was running in stake races and hitting the board and, and giving it his all, he has a lot of heart. Uh, now, when he best broke thing out about him is, is right now is that he's able to go two turns. You know, I didn't know if he was going to be able to do that, and we sent him along his first race this year, and he seemed no problem with it. So I'm really pleased with the way he's developed. Could you have a worse trip than you did in the Gotham Stakes? Uh, just kind of anticipating the gate. He jumps a little too soon. Joe Bravo has to pull him back. Everyone else breaks in front of him. Then he's second to last all the way around. You can tell Joe's got run. When they come mm -hmm. into that final turn, he's trying to come up the inside. He gets shut off twice. Obviously, you get rid of those problems, and your horse is right there in the mix with Stay Thirsty. Well, it was a, a long ride home on the plane. We had to, <laughs> I had to fly back with Joe uh, and sit next to him on the plane, and uh, it was kind of quiet. <laughs> best scenario to say is that it was a quiet flight home are you going to be making the, the flight to new mexico for sunday i mean obviously you're going to be in louisiana on saturday what about sunday yeah i was yesterday i flew back from sunland here to new orleans and then on sunday morning both myself and joe will jump on the plane uh go and meet jose valdivia out there at sunland and then uh eventually make our way back down to Back home, I haven't seen my wife and kids in two weeks. I'll make it back down to Florida. All right, well, hopefully it'll be a very happy homecoming when you get back, and uh, hopefully your horses run like we expect them to and like you are hoping as you have quite yeah, a few going just, this week. It's a lot of fun, you know, talking about stuff like this when you're in it. You know, it's, uh, I'd rather be in it than sitting on the sidelines. You're in it again this year, man. Hopefully you're able to move forward. Kelly Brain, trainer, has four Triple Crown contenders making their way through this week on the Derby Trail, and we'll see them right here at TVG, the network, and TVG.com over the weekend. Kelly, good luck with all your horses, and we'll talk to you again later on. All right, thanks. I just want to wish uh, my other boy that we sold over there good luck in the Dubai UAE Derby. Sweet ducky. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So, we'll talk to you later, Kelly. Take care. That's Kelly Brain as he continues moving forward, trying to get those three-year-olds to peak at the right time so actually he's connected to so that's 1.8 million dollars in the races we just talked about and right. then, and then with the two million dollar uae Golden's, derby yep. so yeah nearly four million dollars in races he's got a hand in mm -hmm. uh, this upcoming weekend